Hello, everybody. And today the, we have a special guest today. It's, it's Samirin, and I'd like to welcome him to The Advisor. We're very excited to have you, Samirin. He is a, um amazing independent consultant. He's worked for many prestigious companies in the past, like Microsoft, and he has done amazing things. And he's here today to talk about technology and it, to provide us with a lot of fun facts about technology, how it applies in today's society, how you could utilize some of these things into your own world, and how it could help you in the present and in the future. Samirin, I am so happy to have you here today. I'm very excited to have you on our show today. Why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Hey, thanks, Stacey. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for kind of tuning in to listen to me. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I've kind of got about 29 years of experience. And this is the kind of thing I used to hear my parents say that, you know, oh, I have so much experience. I never knew I'd, I would be the one saying it one day. Uh, <laughs> most of it has been in technology. Uh, strange fun fact, um, my education has been completely in the world of finance. And very, very early in my career, I realized I was quite bad at it. <laughs> so <laughs> not good good enough to make a dent, at least. So uh, <laughs> That's how technology started for me. And I've been since then, like we kind of chatted, we have been with uh, Tata Consultancy Services in India, IBM for a fairly long time, uh, Microsoft, Dun & Bradstreet. And somewhere in 2018, and I decided that I'm going to be independent and just uh, follow my own agenda, so to speak. So uh, yeah. post that, I've been an independent consultant, advisor to startups and large corporates. Uh, I do a lot of uh, keynotes, speaking, uh, panels, moderating and participating, uh, write in a uh, regular column in a newspaper. And I have my own podcast, uh, which is called Three Techies Banter. Uh, and we kind of call it a fun tech podcast because we kind of look at technology with a fun lens. So yeah. that's uh, me in a very, very short burst. <laughs> You know, technology has basically has, take, has taken over the world and, and you know, it, it's an important um, aspect to, to understand. You know, there's so many different things and technology has brought us so far in today's society. And, you know, I, I know that you like to talk about technology and how it plays a role in our daily lives. And, you know, there's so much we can go into, but what are some of the important things that you'd like the listeners to know about technology and how it applies in today's world and how it could actually help us if we utilize it properly, especially with startup businesses and, you know, trying to move forward in life? It is so. I I kind of talk about it from a very very uh, personal experience, though it was kind of probably the shortest piece of my experience, but it probably had the most lasting impact. Yeah. Uh, so sometime in my career in IBM, I took a one year break to go and work on this uh, digital identity program that India was rolling out. Uh, right. In, in 2011, 12, and at that time, you know, we really didn't have identity. Uh, I think. Uh, less than 10, 15% of the country was even banked. Yeah. Um, so, but, and that's when I think I was truly hit with the realization of what technology can do to kind of, you know, having a far reaching impact, both for good as well as for good business. You know? So I think as that program rolled out, uh, you know, we, we've kind of, uh, we covered a billion plus people uh, with, uh, digital identity uh, the total cost of that program was like a dollar a person when it was finally done you know which is kind of one of the cheapest programs in the world uh, at the height of its uh, rollout we were doing a million registrations a day uh, and you know huge huge and the the beauty of it was its simplicity so if you kind of look at a country like india you realize that not everybody has uh, great credentialing you know, you know people are homeless orphans people don't have a fixed address so we had kind of simplified it to the extent where you know we just needed th four fields to kind of register yourself uh, because their uh, inclusion was the criteria and not information gathering you know that we wanted to include as many people oh, wow. as possible so which was a very powerful concept and i mean as we kind of went forward we realized that as people got identity then you know it became easier for us to uh, find these people 
and pass on benefit to them, whether it be subsidies, whether it be, you know, device programs, because now you could actually digitally find people. And yes. that's how the next wave of payments came into uh, India. And I think that's another kind of a global case study, which is UPI, UPI which is, you know, we do about uh, uh, more than 10 billion transactions a month. And I think uh, if... Uh, the people who do it are to be believed it kind of has a potential to go about 10x still so I mean, that's when when i realized i mean to kind of without kind of monopolizing the conversation yeah that's when i saw technology kind of uh working at a scale and at a pace that you know both delivered good as well as created opportunity for people to build on top and you know create great businesses I mean, in the example of the payments infrastructure, uh, several unicorns have been created in India, which have kind of been built on that UPI infrastructure, you know. So, like I said, good business and good, general good. So uh, that's when I realized that, you know, technology can be such a, a force for good if used correctly. Yes. And for sort of businesses, you know, how, how can... Um... How can people implement good technology into their businesses to help them grow? Because now they have so many different softwares that can help people, you know, really understand, you know, um, you know, who their who their audience is, how they need to grow, where they need to focus on, what they're lacking, what they're, you know, maybe have too much of. Um, you know, what are your um when you have a, a startup business that comes to you, are there mm -hmm. any particular things that you ask them or you make sure that they need to implement into their businesses? Because I think today there's so many businesses start and they, you know, by the end of the year, you see a lot of businesses don't make it. You know, there's a high percentage in the United States that, you know, people start up business all the time or they struggle, especially now after COVID hit, you know, businesses struggle and, you know, the usage of technologies can help people really grow and understand their, their customers, keep in touch with their customers. Um, are there any suggestions, you know, that you give your clients, you know, when they're, ha when they have a startup business to make sure they implement certain things into their business that can help them grow and help them have a long successful career? Oh, no, no, uh, that's, that's actually a very good question. And Coming from the world of technology, I can quite uh, honestly admit that the answer to that question actually does not lie in technology. Oh, really? Uh, so, <laughs> so I mean, while of course there is, there are lots of facets of technology, and there are lots of things you can use. I mean, I mean to put it very simply, you can use all kinds of email to communicate. You can do all kinds of collaborations to do stuff. You can develop tools on different kinds of platforms. But I think what I ask and question or at least try and ascertain from people is that you know what is the problem they are trying to solve and how passionately do they believe that they can solve it you know I mean yes. so uh, is in, in in India you know quite contrary to you know you, you usually think about people moving into white spaces and all that uh, in fact I have kind of seen very very strange examples of uh, people actually building a product in a monopoly market. So, you know, there, there is a company uh, that kind of started uh, uh, a shaving product. And then, you know, in, in India also Gillette enjoys 60, 70% of the market, but they were able to create a niche in that product because of a price point, because of packaging, because of innovation, and they are doing well. Uh, there are companies that are making ice cream. There are companies that are making you know luggage so there is another company that kind of came out and in india there are one or two very large players that dominate and have 60 70 percent of the market share so again you know very counterintuitive but you know if if you and and to that point that if you kind of have a great idea and you're passionate about it and you know how to follow through and all of that i think those i have found to be very good and very, very important for startups. In terms of the technology and the product, I, I would say uh, more is achieved by trial and error than by a fixed roadmap. Because I think the That's days that. of a roadmap that, you know, I'm going to do this for the next one year, two year, three years is 
uh, kind of just doesn't happen, you know. So yeah. most of the times where, and, and I guess, uh, I mean, we have it in India and Bangalore, and I'm sure that's true of Silicon Valley or wherever. I think yeah. more is achieved by conversation and collaboration and being in that vibrant innovation environment where you're constantly, uh, you know, meeting people who are solving the same problem. Yeah. And I think that it seems to be much more powerful than saying, okay, I'm going to use, you know, uh, zoom to do my calls and i'm going to do zero it's 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 a constant state of innovation and that's why you find so many new companies coming out with uh, uh, so many new tools and and each one has a different niche a different requirement and we've seen that even in the world of ai yeah. you know some people like chat gpt some people like gemini some people like claude and some people like Dali, some people like Midgen, and what have you, you know. So yeah. each one, there, there is something that is good for everyone, but I think you need to figure out what's good for you. Short answer, I think from a, a startup's perspective, I think that uh, that problem definition and why you want, why do you think that problem needs to be solved and why do you think that you're the person who should solve it is more important than what you throw at it because... Uh, I think that it could be solved in one of many ways. And it's not important that you you kind of write the technology into the problem. You kind of solve it, figure yeah. out how to solve it. So, yeah. You know, because, you know, nowadays they're coming out with so many different technologies. I, you know, and you hear people talking about, I use this and I use that and I use this. And I think for people too, you know, they, they get confused. They don't know what to do. They don't, you know, they invest in all these things. And for most of the time, they're probably wasting their money, putting, throwing their money sure. away. And, you know, and my thing is, is just that, you know, I, I like the fact that, you know, you, you don't, you mentioned that you don't really need all these technologies, you know, it's just, it's, you know, focusing on, on the business and, and focusing on the people and understanding, I think is, is the message you're trying to get across. And, you know, cause it, I, it's so confusing, I think to a business owner or even person trying to begin a business, cause there's so much out there now, you know, they're you know, people are trying to take it over the top, you know, they're trying to, you know, and you see all these different things. And it's like, you say to yourself, do I really need this? You know, is this really uh, mm. worth the investment? And I feel so many people are are making investments into different technologies and softwares that are out there that they probably don't even need. And they're just throwing their money away. What do you think about that? Well, I think each one needs to kind of uh, decide on their goal and be focused on it. Uh, fashion investing in technology is the worst thing that you can do because you know I just need all the all the coolest gadgets and the coolest equipment and that's what is going to get me past the finish line. Uh, I think uh, it is you know call me old fashioned, but I think it's it's still about the business. It's about the profitability. It's about doing what's right for the customer and uh, and then let the technology flow into that. I mean, I can kind of tell you. I mean, I mean you you're probably a much more. Uh, of an expert at this than I am that you know when you kind of start even in anything like if be it a podcast I mean you can buy the fanciest mics and the fanciest this thing but I think you need to get your content strategy correct I mean you need to be sure about what you're going to say and there's a listeners out there I mean if that after that if you just use a, a simple mic and record you'll still get an audience but you know the equipment will not get you right the people you know if you have nothing important to say and I think that simple illustration applies in every aspect of uh, business or maybe it a startup or be it a large corporate. So, you know, uh, just because someone else is buying it doesn't make it right for you. And, you know, yes. just maybe they, they, they are in a different space and a different stage of their development that they need it, you know? Right. Uh, so I think, I think it's, I mean, if you kind of take lessons from the simple things that around you and the simple things that have worked for other people, uh, right. it'll be easier than trying to, you know, be trendy. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree with you. You know, I I knew one person. He made a a very a very good income, and you know, he worked from his basement. He put a he put a, a sheet that looked like a curtain. You know, like that you would go on top of a podium, and you know, it looked it looked like a stage. 
and he would speak from the um from his basement you know and it looked like he was on stage and it was a very simple setup and he did very well for himself and he didn't invest like tons and tons of money in into it you know he just got what he needed and he did very well for himself and sometimes you know even though some of these technologies that come out are really interesting and they look really cool you know, you have to stop and say, do I really need that? Is that really a good investment? You know, what is that going to do for me? You know, and is it going to, is it going to heighten me and make my business a better business? You know, and, and some of these technologies, they come out and they look like they have, a you know, they, they say they could do X, Y, and Z. And then you go into the software and for someone that doesn't have a technical background, it could be very confusing. You know, some of these technology, technology softwares that they sell, you know, that I've looked at, some of them are very simple to use and some of them are very difficult to use, you know? So um, there is so much out there now, you know, we are bombarded by technology. It's really, I think, focusing on what we, like you said, what we really need, what's really important, you know? And sometimes it's not the technology, it's the product or the service you're providing and how you provide it to the people that really matters is the message that I'm getting. How do you feel about that? You know, I completely, completely on board with uh, what you are saying because I think it's got to do with, uh, you know, buying of technology. I mean, if if you're like a corner store, mom and pop shop, and you, know, you want to do your accounts, and maybe it's just good, it's just all right to do it with a plain old fashioned paper ledger. I mean, why why do you need a why do you need a system? But you know, tomorrow if you decide to say I'm going to kind of throw an SAP at it, it it's just kind of an you know, kind of mus killing a uh, mosquito with a hoe with a gun. I mean, there's there's just no need for that, and 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 that's when all the issues you talked about uh, rise, right? Because now yeah. you have a skills issue. You don't know what to get out of the system. You don't understand the system. You know, you are asking for something. It's not able to give. So I think it 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 needs to be, uh, for want of a better word, appropriate technology. It needs to fit in your environment. It needs to be calibrated to the skills you have to what you can absorb and assimilate yeah. and what you can best leverage you know uh, you know if you kind of just have something and you're kind of getting more out of it is better than buying something which is like out of proportion you know and you're unable to get anything out of that system yeah right? I, right. Mean, I mean it just looks fantastic on paper and you know but you just seem to be getting nothing out of that right right and, and we've seen so many examples of people rushing to buy enterprise software, rushing to buy what have you. And and then it's just kind of, you know, one fine day is just thrown away and people just go back to, you know, oh, you know, we don't want to do this. So I think that that is very, very uh, important. And that is also one of the reasons why technology gets a bad name. Because yeah. uh, uh, people, it, it is like, you know, people just buy it for no reason at all or without thinking it through and you know technology is out there you know you, you, you can use it for whatever purpose you want yeah uh, but uh but that decision needs to be you have to be responsible and take ownership of that decision and you know say that you know, do i really i mean it's like anything else you buy right at home and i kind of always go back to these basic examples i mean would you really buy a thousand watt bulb to light up the porch of your house or would you just buy some you know it, it's like you know yeah it's not and you don't buy the brightest bulb that you go in or, or you don't buy the biggest refrigerator yeah you use in your home you know it's, it's stuff like that right and you don't buy the most fancy sofa if you want you just buy something that fits in your living room and fits the decor and all of that right and so yes same is the case with you know why can you confuse the issue with technology then you know it needs to fit in the space that it's supposed to work right i mean yes uh, uh so so that's i mean that that's really the most commonsensical way of understanding this i mean it, it, there is i mean and, and you don't need uh, expensive consultants to tell you that <laughs> <laughs> i you know i i love that the fact that you, you know tell me a little about your podcast because you have your podcast provides a lot of fun facts and in you know fun technology you know you people to learn about the technology but not be overwhelmed by you know some of the complexities of it you make it fun you make it easy to understand and you help people so they can grow so tell me a little about i want to hear a little about your podcast and what goes on behind the scenes and what you guys talk about so uh we um 
so we 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 kind of uh, whenever we were talking about technology listening to technology it's, it's kind of always very serious and grim and people seem to be very taking each other very seriously you know like you know and they don't want to kind of so we felt that you know we should kind of bit of to bit of myth busting there in terms of that it doesn't need to be serious and just like it kind of we're having this conversation right i mean it can be commonsensical and you know it kind of anybody should be able to relate to any example because the same example of appropriateness i can kind of go into technical jargon and you know start talking technical specs and say that you know why this is right and wrong for you and all but or i can give you a drawing room light bulb refrigerator example and make mm-hmm. you understand right so right. i think that that was the real genesis of why we did it and in fact uh, uh, one of us uh, uh, nilesh he, he's kind of uh, comes from a very formal uh, technical background i'm kind of somewhere middling and the other person she that she is actually from a marketing background so you know we kind of balance each other out so that we are kind of always asking each other you know that you know you know what are people looking for is this understandable is it easy is it you know yeah uh, what are people really thinking about and and that's how topics and things you know just something that interests us we pick it and then we kind of dissect that suppose if we don't know enough about a topic we kind of get a guest in and you know they kind of have a um kind of demystify something um yeah and uh, so it's, it's just kind of an easy format we, we've kind of really unfortunately not really done a great job with monetizing it or anything uh so it's all coming out of our pocket now uh but it's fun we we, we like it because we decide what we say we we have no compulsions we don't promote anything yeah uh we, we, we have fun with our artwork we even have a we, we did a couple of trailer videos where we did just fun producing it uh we actually uh with, with a group of friends we wrote out the song and uh, 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 actually it's, it's a jingle so we kind of did a jingle on one of the pieces of sound <laughs> of music and, and stuff like that so so we kind of try to keep it fun and uh, you know try to um, convey to people that we are having fun doing it you know you can't yeah. look serious and say I'm having fun you know this is me having fun and have a serious <laughs> 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 so 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 that's what it, that's how the journey has been it's been interesting we've done uh, uh long episodes we've had something like uh, uh shorts where we kind of do trivial facts about you know yeah. how a uh, a uh, uh, a mummy from egypt needed a visa because it was going for restoration work and why the you know the size or the di- dimensions of the a rocket is a certain uh uh is a certain uh length yeah uh, because it kind of traces back to you know being taking on railroad railway carriages and those were b- built basically on roman chariots and basically it came down to the size of the horse's ass <laughs> that, that was what it did. so i mean <laughs> so, so so like from rocket ships to horse's asses kind of stuff so so we kind of so it, it's it's like interesting things that we kind of bring to light so there is trivia there is fun facts and um, yeah so i mean yeah that we will uh, always looking for new ways to do things you know maybe in the future we'll do a live we're thinking of kind of getting on to internet radio and stuff so yeah but whatever um, budget and time permits but yeah it's 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 been fun and we've got a lot of ancillary benefits out of it right a uh, lot of uh, you know people who ne- never knew us felt that oh great you know this is, we didn't know you could do this or you know it's so much fun yeah and you know now i now i realize you know i've, I've understood this better for the first time so which is kind of a big kick <laughs> yeah right no i like that i like that a lot i think is it's it's nice when you can make you know take topics like you know that are, are sometimes difficult to understand or people are serious when they talk about technology and just you know loosen up and make it fun and make it easy because nowadays if you if you listen when they say write books for instance write it on a sixth grade level it used to be an eighth grade level now it's a sixth grade level so if you're talking about te- technology and you're talking about it you know on a higher level it's going to go past most people's heads but if you talk about it fun and you make it easy and you compare it to a horse's ass you know people are going <laughs> to <laughs> people are going to understand you know <laughs> I, I, I said yeah i get that <laughs> definitely <laughs> 
You know, so I like that. I think that's a great idea. I think it's fun. It's easy. People are learning and they're laughing at the same time. And that, that to me, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, sometimes things are more of a stand-up comedy show than a tech show. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter makes the world go around, you know. 70% yeah, of illnesses are caused by stress. So if we could bring a little laughter into everything, that would be a great thing. Absolutely, I agree. Thing, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I always wanted to ask you, um, before the show, we were talking a little about AI and AI has, you know, it's big, you know, AI has been here for a very long time. Like we have one of our speakers that comes on, you know, uh, his name is Mark and he comes on a lot. And he, he was one, actually one of the technologists that actually created AI back in the day for the military when it all started. And, um, you know, I didn't realize at that time that AI has been here for so long, you know, I, because it just really has, you know, exploded in our society. People, you know, are, they have AI this, AI that, AI for, you know, pictures, AI for content, you know, it's just like gone crazy, you know, and, you know, how do you feel about AI? Because AI, I think could be used good in some ways. And in some ways I think it could be abused and not so good for society. So what are your intakes about AI? And, and you know, how do you, how do you feel about um, the, the AI advancement that we've kind of come across where it's like the new trend in thing? Every software has AI, everything you, you see on, you know, you could download this software, it's AI, it makes it easier for you to write, it makes it easier for you to do this. So what's your intake? <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. That it's, it's, I'm so glad you said that it's been around for a long time and you'll be shocked how long it is because, uh, I mean, if you kind of extend the definition of AI uh, to include any kind of automation, then, you know, it, it was even there in the times of Jason and the Argonauts because there was this giant called Talos who used to guard the island of Crete and uh, it was actually just a giant machine and uh, it used to take three circles of the island and used to kind of throw uh, boulders and stuff at invading ships and all that. So Jason and his Argonauts actually kind of defeated Talos by kind of uh, removing basically what amounted to the fuel that was powering it right. and stuff like that. And there are stories like that in Indian mythology and all that, you know, and so... Yeah. AI or automation or building something as a replica of the human being or a yeah. superior version of yourself has been there for centuries. Interestingly, on the other side, uh, the definition of AI, if you kind of go back, you know, the, one of the big issues with regulation of AI is the fact that people don't agree on the definition. So right. in fact, there was this conference, I forget when, somewhere in the 2000s, where they went into the conference with, uh, you know, about 15 definitions of AI and they came out of the conference with more definitions yeah. and not agreement on the 15. So, so that's a little bit of uh, context. But having said that, uh, AI or any piece of technology has a good and bad side. So there, are, it's just like medicine, right? I mean, you, you right. there's a medicine which is a painkiller or it becomes an opioid. There is dynamite that is used for road building or you kind of use it for destructive purposes. So there right. is, same is the case with AI. So, you know, you can AI, use AI for research. You can use AI for doing a lot of things that would make your life simpler, easier, uh, uh, free up time for yourself to do other things. Right. But can it be used for bad? I mean, yeah, obviously, I mean, AI can be used for warfare, I mean, the Ukrainians and the Russians are using it, all kinds of stuff to kind of, kind of get at each other and stuff like yeah. that. So I think, uh, but I think, I mean, at a more philosophical le level, it kind of goes back to human nature. I mean, it's we who are in control of it, right? Right. So we decide to choose to use it well or badly. I mean, it's it's really us. And I think we, we should not shy away from our responsibility as saying, oh, AI is taking over the world. What can I do? I mean, that's that's <laughs> nowhere near true at, at all, I think. I mean, despite whatever. They, I mean, it, it's very much in our control. I, mean, I think it does fantastic things, but I think it's nowhere near where we are getting replaced by humans and it's really up to us what we do with it. Yeah. We can do fantastic things. Technology can you know do a lot of you know, great stuff. Uh, maybe, you know, find hotspots on the planet, find new reserves of water, or, you know, restore art, um, what have you. But uh, can it be stop people from doing something bad with it? 
frankly, no. I mean, I think uh, that the good versus evil battle will continue and then people with access to the technology will use it for good and use it for bad. So right. I mean, that, that's, that's a problem we have to live with. But I mean, it's it's not a uh, simple answer that, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, AI has become very bad. It will take us, take over or it's all good. Yeah. Because it's much more nuanced than that, I think. <laughs> Now, when it comes to technology, how how does technology play a role in all areas of our lives? Because, you know, we are surrounded by technology. And, you know, you had mentioned before, like in, in specific areas like fashion, it, it, you know, technology takes a certain role. And then, you know, it has like, you know, in, in every industry, it takes a certain role. Is there a common role that technology does in, in all these areas or for every industry, technology is used differently? So I think in if people find different uses for different things in technology. <clears throat> so uh, I know for a fact that people use technology in wildlife conservation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just kind of spotting and identified snow leopards in the Himalayas, you know. So uh, Microsoft was doing work in that to, you know, find them, track them, and figure out how many people are there. So tons of stuff. It was used in, so when the Notre Dame burned down, uh, you know, they had to restore it. And the only, the, the best images of the Notre Dame were actually in the Assassin's Creed game. Mm -hmm. and that's where they got the best images. So they can, you know, the, that was one of the big inputs that went into reconstruction yeah. of the Notre Dame. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it was used um, uh, uh, by the Americans to find IEDs because of a prediction model that, you know, if you find a stockpile or if you find ID, you know, find ID, then the stockpile must be within so much radius. So there's a whole bunch of algorithms. So yeah. there is, you know, there is, I mean, the possibility is really infinite in terms of, you know, what you can uh, do with technology. Uh, uh, you know, today we are using AI to maybe, you know, give us suggestions on drafting letters, doing research. You know, Google is a clear example of great use of technology. Right. Google Maps is a use of great technology and yeah. great businesses. I think Uber wouldn't have existed if Google didn't exist, Maps yes. didn't exist, mm -hmm. ride share, uh, then uh, food delivery, you know, people order food just anywhere, you know, quick commerce. So yeah. there, is, there is a huge amount of things that, touch our lives uh, you know health and wellness has become a big area you know the, all the apple health and fitbits of the world yes. and the fitness rings so there is tons of things that touch your life and which you can uh, you can use that data and you know improve yourself or you can say that google has all my data and they're going to, you know they're you know they're going to misuse it I mean, there is that aspect of course <laughs> not mm -hmm. to be but I think there is tons of things. I mean, you just need to uh, sit back and look around and see there is huge, huge uh, uh, uses of technology or technology being applied experimentally or at a mass scale. Yeah. As I as we talked about in in India, at least as far as the digital public infrastructure is concerned. So great potential for good, like I always say. But yeah, I mean, you 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 need to find the right and the uh, use case that is going to drive the right benefit but i think there is there is in you know people are always advancing technology yeah. in different facets but you just need to figure out you know, what should i use i mean just like the notre dame case you know i mean you could have gone and kept on building models and but somebody thought guess what let me just look at this game and see you know maybe they have the best image and you know that uh, yeah so that was an int it, so it's, it's kind of human ingenuity more than technological brilliance <laughs> work. Now, if you wanted to take like everything we talked about and give a couple of takeaways of what you really want the audience to understand, what are some important things you'd like to emphasize? So I think there's one thing I would definitely like to say to everyone is that you don't have to study technology to make a career in technology or a career in AI, because people keep asking me this, you know, can I become a professional? You know? I think my biggest takeaway from all of this is that if you are good in your field of work, then you can make a definite impact in technology. So, you know, if you are a 
artist, you can contribute to AI development because they're doing art. If you're yeah. a musician, you can be a great technology professional because people are trying to create playlists. There is an algorithm for that. Right. There is, you know, music appreciation. There is, you, you could be a sociologist, you could be a psychologist, you could be a historian. You Anybody can become, a, can have a career in technology if you are great in your field of work. But not every technologist can make become a historian or become other thing. So, <laughs> so I think I think for people who are looking to understand technology better or even make a career in technology, that is my big takeaway. Because I think I get the feeling that everybody feels they're missing the AI bus, and you know how do I get onto it and make a career? So I yeah. think there's the, I mean fret not because you know you don't have to be a technologist because all the biggest tech companies in the world are looking for people from with varying skill sets mm. uh, to build and train their models. And and that, need, see, if you need to train someone to be like a human, you need to have all of these aspects, right? Yes. And all mm -hmm. the senses. So I think that, I think, is a personal piece of advice that I can kind of leave with for everyone, more from a career and all point of view. And otherwise, I think... Uh, from a technology, I think just being aware and knowing what's going on is half the battle and, and right. then kind of uh, tailoring it to what you need, you know, no need to over-engineer. Right, uh, right. Is buy the right size refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't get a, a bigger light bulb or a brighter light bulb than you need. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Now, this has been so pleasurable. Like, where can people find you if if they want if they want to see learn more about you and learn about some of the things you do and learn about your podcast? Where where can they go to find more information on you? So I, I'm 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 there on LinkedIn, uh, Samir and Ghosh. You can kind of look me up. I've got my own uh, work Instagram page where I kind of keep posting stuff. Uh, that is my podcast. Uh, if you if you feel and you want to reach out to me. You can, I mean, LinkedIn is the best place. Uh, you can just leave a message and an in message. And if you want to just have a chat about something, I'm happy to do that. And uh, and after that, of course, even I've got to make a living. So maybe I'll charge. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have a website people can go to or a best? Uh, no, 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 no website right now. Okay. So I'm, I'm kind of a bit of a lone ranger. So I mean, because of my this career transition, I decided that I'm going to kind of shrink my digital footprint a little bit. So yeah. I kind of just do work that I like to do. Exactly. But people generally reach out to me and I just take up work that I can do myself and then leave the rest of the time to do other things. But like I said, LinkedIn's the best place. Uh, you can find me there. You can drop a line. I'll definitely get back to you. And what are some of the things that you can help people with so they understand like some of the services you provide? So... Uh, I know there's a lot. So, no, 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 not really, not really that much, not really that much. But I think uh, that there are two types. I mean, um, people do come to me for doing uh, keynote addresses, panel discussions, you know. So, yes. so that's it. if you're kind of doing an event, if you want to kind of talk to a large group of people on any of these topics, I'm happy to do that. Uh, between startups and large corporates, most of them are kind of either trying to build their product roadmap, uh, a go-to-market strategy, uh, you know, grow their business or for the large corporates it's kind of they are embarking on their digital journey you know they want to figure out you know how they can kind of adopt new technologies you know grow yeah. uh become become and remain more relevant vis-a-vis -vis their competition vis-a-vis -vis the more agile startup so those yeah. are the kind of people that kind of come to me and uh, just a word of caution that you know i i am i i'm provide advisory services a lot of people like me to get involved in long projects which I typically don't do because it's difficult to do yourself, but yeah. I'm I'm kind of in an advisory capacity, always available. That's great. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. You know, it's, this has been amazing. I, I've really enjoyed, you know, speaking with you. I hope you'll come back on the show. Maybe we can dive into some of these topics and go more in depth about some of the topics we touched base on today. But, you know, this has been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for coming and providing us with a world of information. You know, technology, there's so much to learn when it comes to technology because it's an ever-changing world. And, you know, sometimes we have to really focus on 
us, the product, the service, and not get so wrapped up in all the technologies that are out there. Because like you said, you know, don't, you don't want to get a bigger light bulb than you need, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. I think what I probably landed up doing is I kind of busted every other technology. <laughs> there's not much to learn. Really. So, but, but so be it. I think it's, it's way simpler than it sounds and it, it's really up to you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been wonderful. I've really had a great time. Thank you. Same here. Thanks so much, Stacey, for having me. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too. Thank you. Thank you so much.